On this week's show, the Georgia Southern baseball team makes it all the way to the Sun Belt Championship, but comes up just short of making it to the postseason. We'll have highlights and much more as we welcome you inside the Eagles next. And welcome inside the Eagles Nest. I'm your host, Josh Aubrey, being joined by Mike Anthony, sports editor and Georgia Southern beat writer for the Statesboro Herald. And Mike, what a run it was for the Georgia Southern baseball team. I don't think anybody predicted that they'd make it all the way to the championship game, although it was a possibility. They had played well against some of the better teams. And when you've got a pretty good pitching staff, you feel like if you can stay in games and get a little bit of run support, You've got a chance, and that is exactly what happened. The Georgia Southern pitching staff came through once again, all the way through the tournament. I mean, I guess you could even say in the championship game, they didn't pitch terribly. They just didn't hit the ball. So, obviously, they lost to Lafayette in the championship game. Tough way to end things, but that's a nationally ranked team and not a bad team to lose to. Your thoughts on how the things went in the Sun Belt tournament in San Marcos for the Eagles. Well, certainly no reason for the Eagles to be ashamed of that effort. A great run through the tournament for years. That's been Georgia Southern's M.O. They haven't won a regular season title since 2001. However, in that same span, there's a handful of conference tournament titles, and it seems like this team, Coach Rodney Hennon, is able to to flip those switches, find the right gear, and you mentioned the pitching staff. Nothing short of amazing what the Eagles were able to do. Back-to-back shutouts. At one point, they had thrown... 25 consecutive scoreless innings. You just don't see that in college baseball. And in the end, uh, counted them up over four games, only five different innings where Eagle pitching allowed a run to cross the plate. So you don't want to blame anybody. You made the championship game. There's no one to blame, but certainly uh, just a little bit more hitting, a few more balls, find a hole. The Eagle pitching certainly did their part, and the good news is most of it's coming back. Yeah, most of it is, and you saw some some guys really step up there, step up their game. Ike Horn, the way he pitched, uh, you know, and then Chase Cohen, and I guess that was Thursday's game. The Thursday game, he was only able to go two innings before the rain came. And then the rain comes down, and then you go to the bullpen, and what do you find? Landon Hughes, and we've seen this <laughs> again. Uh, uh, same story if you look back through previous tournaments for Georgia Southern. Uh, it seems like every year there's a reliever who's called upon to wear a few more hats than he did in the regular season. He was lights out coming out of the bullpen for the Eagles all season long. And then Hennon dials him up to trot out there for the third inning. The ESPN commentators who hadn't seen a lot of Landon Hughes said, he's going to come at you, he's going to throw hard. It's a matter of how long he can go. Well, he went as long as they needed him to. Seven Seven innings, innings, (laughs) no hits in seven innings, only two walks, nine nine strikeouts. I think that Landon's probably a little bit uh, uh, mad that, you know, he got so much run support. It looked like he could have gone seven more. Yeah, well, the fact is on two of these games for Georgia Southern, they were going into the eighth inning only up one to nothing. So there was not really much of a breathing room there and in the eighth inning in two of those games I guess in the Arlington and in the game we're talking about uh, Arlington and then again against uh, South Alabama they were one nothing in the eighth and then they got some run support and were able to uh, maybe have some breathing room in the ninth inning but the championship game against Lafayette the bats just weren't there ran into a good pitcher once again and uh weren't able to come back and I guess that was the first time that they had trailed in the entire Sun Belt tournament. And against uh, UL Lafayette, a team picked to win the Sun Belt. This is a team that was ranked number one in the entire nation just two years ago. They've been to not only regionals, regionals that they've hosted, they're about to host again. They've been to super regionals and UL Lafayette just a very good program year in and year out but that's exactly what the Eagles aspire to be. They made this jump up to the Sun Belt constantly in the top nine, top 10 as far as RPI for conferences goes. It's only gonna get better. It's only gonna get tougher next year as Coastal Carolina comes in. All right, well, we showed you last week the opening round of the Sun Belt Tournament and the Eagles victory that started on Wednesday. Now let's go to Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday and take a look at some of the highlights from the rest of the tournament. Round two of the Sun Belt Baseball tournament seeing Georgia Southern taking on UT Arlington. The Eagles able to grab the early lead in the third. The squeeze play. Matt Anderson lays down the bunt. CJ Ballard scores and it's 1-0 Eagles. 
Landon Hughes called in relief of Chase Cohen in the third inning, and he was on fire. Seven innings of no-hit ball with nine strikeouts. In the fourth, more from Hughes, the strikeout to end the inning. The Eagles offense helping out in the eighth, still 1-0 runners on second and third, and Jordan ran with the two-out single into right. Both runners will come in to score. It's 3-0 Georgia Southern. They'd add to it later that inning. C.J. Ballard, the batter, and the ground ball toward third. Shortstop's throw hits the runner, allowing two Eagles to score, making the score 5-0 Georgia Southern. Kent Rollins with another insurance run as he will single into right field. The Eagles go on for the victory by a final count of 6 to nothing. So to Saturday we go in a semifinal matchup with South Alabama. Kent Rollins, the squeeze with the runner on third. Rollins out at first, but it's 1-0 Eagles as the run scores. On the mound, Brian Eichhorn in command, seven and a third innings, six hits, no runs, four strikeouts, and he gets some defensive help as well. Logan Baldwin's going to make SportsCenter's top ten once again, getting horizontal on this one and making the grab. To the eighth we go, still one nothing, but just like Thursday, the Eagles pad the lead in the eighth. Jordan Wren, the three-run homer this time. The Eagle lead is extended to four to nothing. Connor Simmons and Chase Cohen help close things out. Cohen getting the 6-4-3 double play to end things. And the Eagles advance to the Sunbelt Championship with the 4 to nothing win. So to the title game we go. The Eagles up against 17th ranked Lafayette. A pitching duel early on. Wyatt Marks for the Raging Cajuns. And Evan Challenger for the Eagles going toe-to-toe. The Eagles getting a taste of their own medicine as left fielder Kenan Fontenot makes the diving grab in left, robbing possible extra bases. In the fifth, the Raging Cajuns grab the lead. Brian Mills, the double to right. Nick Thurman scores, and it's one to nothing. Still in the fifth, Joe Robbins Ground ball just out of the reach of Cal Baker. Mills will score. It's two to nothing Lafayette. In the eighth, down three to nothing. Connor Simmons in trouble as he uncorks the wild pitch, allowing another run to score to make it four to nothing. And finally, the finishing touch coming off the bat of Nick Thurman, the solo home run to right. And the Eagles' postseason ends by a final count of five to nothing. Well, Mike, the all-tournament team, not a big surprise. You had Evan McDonald, you had Jordan Wren, Brian Eichhorn, and Landon Hughes all named to the all-tournament team. Not a big surprise. Jordan Wren, the way he really picked it up. And the good thing is, I believe all four coming back next year. Yep, uh, the entire outfield coming back, the entire starting staff for the weekend coming back. Landon Hughes out of the pen, also available to come back. Ryan Cleveland, your Sun Belt regular season home run leader. He's just a junior, he can come back. Evan McDonald, he's been solid with the glove, got better and better, as did Jordan Wren with the bat as the year went on. So a solid core of players to build around. A few really highly touted high school prospects coming up. Hopefully uh, the draft, <laughs> maybe they get drafted, but maybe they don't go. It's up to them, but hopefully Georgia Southern gets everybody that they think is coming into camp, gets started on the fall, and they've definitely got some uh, uh, some good stuff to work with after a great end of the season. I guess the big question, Evan Challenger, do you think he'll get drafted? I guess that was the thing. His run support would have been a little better, and those wins would have been in the double digits. I think he has a better chance. I don't know if you know, if the Clemson series will hurt him at all or what, I would think a lefty that throws like he does would have an opportunity. I guess the big question is, you never know, if he gets drafted in the 20th round, will he go or will he want to stay in school? And, and it's hard to say because, as you mentioned, with a lefty, I'm a lefty, us lefties, <laughs> we get a little bit of special treatment. You don't have to throw as hard. You have Challenger, a scale, right? <laughs> right. Challenger doesn't quite light up the radar gun. He's not going to throw 92, 93, but 
What he can do is spot the fastball. He's got two off-speed pitches that he can locate as well. He's pitched through trouble. He's okay with pitching without a ton of run support. And I don't think the Clemson game really plays a, a big factor in what scouts would see because the Sun Belt, maybe they don't have a Clemson in there, but they've got a lot of solid teams. He goes up on Friday night against each team's ace. And more often than not, even if he doesn't get credit for the win, he pitches the Eagles deep into the game and his team knows that they've got a shot to win every time he takes the yeah, hill. If you look at things like his ERA, his whip and things like that, you can see the numbers speak for themselves. He's a solid pitcher. I think wins and losses is, is kind of tough to go by because of the fact that you look at the run support and they just didn't have it because, as you mentioned, you're playing against another team's ace on those Friday nights and the Eagles just really didn't get it done offensively most of the season on those Friday night games. Well, that'll wrap things up for now. For Mike Anthony, I'm Josh Aubrey. Thanks for joining us. Hope to see you again soon.